Is there anything more frustrating than trying to create the perfect schematic to represent your scientific research? Well now, there's BioRender. In the past, my day, I had to go through and use Word. I had to use PowerPoint. But now, the best illustration tool available for you right now is this one. It's BioRender. Look at this. Create professional scientific figures in minutes. And you can browse thousands of pre-made icons. Look at this. It's like drag and dropping. Used by hundreds of people. Blah, blah, blah. But let's check it out. Once you are logged in. This is what it looks like. So you've got all of the templates at the top. You've got gallery. But this is where all of the different stuff happens. And not only does it do figures and illustrations, it does so much more. So stay around and you'll see what I mean. So here we've got all of the different templates. You can start here by people that are far better at using this than I am. So you can click here and end up with a template. Let's click there and see where we go. Yes. Oh, look, that is bloody brilliant, isn't it? Oh, I like that. So if you're doing something about blood, you could use this. But if you don't want to use a template, all you have to do is go to here, create new. And if you click on the little arrow down here, we've got illustration, poster builder, and graph. Stop it, bio render. That's too much goodness. But let's go to illustration first. Click here for illustration, and then you get taken to this blank page. And for those of you that use Canva, it's very, very similar to Canva. Canva. So along the side here, you've got all of the things you can put into the figure. And at the top, you've got some sort of like general uh, canvas options. And you'll see in a minute, it's really easy to take the icons and customize them. So down here, we've got icons, we've got templates, we've got brushes, we've got graphs, favorites, uploads, PDB, which is some sort of like protein builder that I've never seen before. Um, and then also edit down here, select an icon to edit. So let's go to icons first and just see what we've got. And we've got so, so many. I'd be surprised you couldn't find something in here that you could use for, um, you know, chemistry. You've got uh, different cells. You've got species. Look, fish. I'm going to put in a fish. Why not? <laughs> my, my research isn't about fish, but I want fish. That is a beautiful looking fish. I'm going to drop that one in there. There we are. And you can see it's very easy to build out a very, very sort of like professional looking schematic uh, graphical abstract or even just a simple figure to put in your work. You can see here once we click on the icon, we've got all of the options that we've got here. So we can have different color fish, then we've got these color overlay, we can overlay a color if we just want a different color for some reason. And then we've got transparency, we've got saturation, and we've got glow. Ooh, make it nice and glowy, <laughs> glowing clownfish. I love that. Okay, then. So uh, let's go back up to icons and see what else we got. So we've got so many things that you can put in human anatomy. Let's have it eating a liver. All right, done. So there we are. This, oh, no. Okay, go here. This is this one. Blah, blah, blah. There we are. Yum, yum, yum. This is my research about clownfish dissecting livers. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, then. So yeah, it's super easy. Same thing again. You can click here and you've only got transparency here for this one. But all of the options end up here. Now, brushes are really cool. If you're doing a lot of cell work, if you're doing a lot of stuff with membranes, like oh, actually I did with different soap membranes. So I could put this one in um, and then I click here. I get brush. And then all I have to do is brush on here and it will create, um, yeah, the the membrane for me. So this could be a nice little cellular membrane for me. Um, and then we'll also got all oh, so many options, colors, let's put the clownfish in a uh, in a membrane like this. So this is about my research of clownfish uh, in let's have a look in uh, soap. Uh, my cells dissecting livers. There we are. This is getting a bit weird, isn't it? But you can see I can click on here and get all of the different types of uh, options for that as well. Then graphs, favorites, uploads. It's so, so easy. Obviously, this is rubbish, but I like to go to the, the um, templates and actually have a look to see what... No, let's uh, skip that. Don't need to save that rubbish bit of work. Um, we actually like to go to the templates and you can see some of the amazing stuff that if you just spend a little, t little bit of time investing in the skills to build out, you know, all of these simple things, it really really is a really, really powerful tool. Look at this, look, we've even got cotton field seeding. We've even got all of this stuff that we could put in. It's like a little lovely diagram. You'd spend hundreds of dollars getting someone to do that for you. Now you can get it for you, for your work. 
Love it. All right then, it gets even better than that. Check this out. And I'm very excited about this next thing. Okay, so the next thing you need to know about is what I think is probably the best tool in here for a wide range of academia. It's Poster Builder. Poster Builder is a really, really sort of great tool that allows you to build out a poster that you can stand next to and look really, really sad and be like, oh, no one's speaking to me at this poster session. I wish I had friends. Or I just want this to be over as quick as possible so I can go drink the free alcohol and eat the free food. That's if you drink alcohol. I don't, but some people do. I did when I was a student. Anyway, that's for another day, another story. All right then. So here you can see I've opened up the um, the poster thing here and I've got loads and loads of different um, options for templates. I really like that they give you a load of different templates because there are even ones there from different universities. So if you're lucky, your university will be there. Um, here we the Florida Atlantic University poster template. Well, I'm not there. But look, the one thing I like about this is actually is, do you remember the better posters by, I think it was a guy called Mike? They've actually included some of the features that I really liked about their poster, which is this. Let's go to this one where in the middle you have, here we are, better poster classic. This is what I want. A nice big main finding in the middle and all of the stuff along the side. Yes, I'm going to use that template. Love it. Once you've selected a template, this is where the fun starts and you can start dragging and dropping different things into different places. So let's just let it apply the template. Use template. Go. Go, 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 go. Go. Oh, why is that not working? There we are. We're in. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't want to do this. Yes, yes. Insert content. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. You get it. You can actually read the instructions when they pop up. But you can see here, we've got the outline of the table. Uh, no, go away. Why is that happening? Anyway, here we go. Um, it's a little bit um, sort of clunky at the moment, I think, but ultimately you can use this and you've got all of the different contents you can insert here. So you've got title, section, text, image, padding, header, caption. So let's put in, um, I don't know, let's get rid of that one and let's put in some text instead, shall we? There we are. There's some nice text and uh, yeah. Easy peasy. If you want to insert content, you can go back to this insert content. Actually, I do want an image there. Let's put an image. There we are. That's where it is. And then you can add an image up here. Um, you can insert graphs and we'll talk about graphing in a minute using this tool. But I think this is a really great way of coming up with that first draft of a poster that you can show because not only is the layout done for you, you can also use their really great images. Um, in the middle, you can uh, create your own schematics and port them into your poster. I don't think it's been easier or as fun to create a scientific poster or a research poster. By the way, look, this was my thesis. Before all of this magical stuff, I had to actually use Word and PowerPoint to create loads of figures. Look, this one was easy. How's that one? Okay, that one is easy because that's just some like levels. Okay, but there's one in here that I was really proud of. Let me find it for you. This isn't it, but that was one I did about charge separation in organic photovoltaic devices. You like that, don't you? You dirty scientists. All right, okay, okay, it's in here somewhere. I'll find it for you. Meanwhile. There it is. I don't know why, but I was particularly pleased with that schematic that I did in bloody, uh, I think it was just in PowerPoint or in Paint or something like that. But we don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> Look how rubbish it is. You can now get professional figures by using something like uh, BioRender. And the great thing is you don't even need to be a designer. So the last thing I want to show you, by the way, is a new feature and uh, it is pretty cool. Let's check it out. Okay, so the last thing I want you to know about is this, if you go up to create new and it's graph. So they are using AI to detect variables and names in a table and then it creates graphs for you. So here you can see you can start from data where you upload a spreadsheet and we'll be doing that. But before we do that, look, you've got loads of different templates that you can use, browse graph templates. Um, and then you've got independent variable, two independent variable, X, Y analysis with scatter plot, mean, median points, line plot. Oh, that's new new line plot like that, dose response analysis, heat map, stuff that I would never use in my research. But look at that. And you can even regress, request a graph type if it's not in there. But I'm going to put in some fake data. Look at this. I've got here fake scientific data. All right, that's good. I'll put that in. I'll push create. And then the AI will detect 
the data in there. Now, one thing is it needs to be a very simple format. This is what it looks like. So you've got your sample temperature, you know, whatever um, sort of like uh, totals you need or whatever column names, that's what it is. And then sort of like the different samples and then all of the data here. So it needs to be a very simple CSV file. If it's anything more complicated for this, I found it can struggle a little bit, but uh, um, yeah, this is what happens if it all goes well. So here you can see I've got my fake scientific data, I've got my sample ID, it's, it sort of like knows that this is the temperature, this is the PhD level, PhD, oh, I've said that too many times, pH level, and then enzyme activity and observation time. Okay, so those are all the things it picked up on and you can see, yeah, okay, find five variables, great. Now, let's pick a graph type. Let's go in here, oh, what do I want? Let's go into a column chart and then let's add uh, some things. So independent variable, sample ID, then let's have a look at something else. Okay, no, I don't want a second independent variable. I want a dependent variable, which is the Y axis. Let's do pH level, no, let's do temperature. No, let's do enzyme activity. That's more interesting, isn't it? And, and let's go here, uh, sample ID again, and then generate graph. And then it will generate a lovely graph, which is all formatted, not like Excel, where you've got to go in and format to make it look pretty. This is about making it look pretty. It's good with simple graphs, but anything more complicated than, you know, like with multiple um, multiple variables and, and plots and overlays and gradients, you know, you need to do it on your own. But if you've got a simple data set that you want a really nice graph, quickly, this is what I would be using. Um, and it comes with a free, uh, I think it's like 14 day trial or something like that. And then it is a little bit too expensive, in my opinion, for scientists and researchers. I think it's like $32 a month or something. But uh, use the free trial and see what happens. You may love it. And also, they do have some team and university subscriptions, which means you'll get it for free and someone else pays for it. Yes, look at that. So this is the graph that gets generated here. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And if we want to click on something to change it, all we have to do is click, and then we get all of the options on the side here. So you can see I can change the thickness, and this updates immediately at um, uh, in real time. So it means you can see what effect you're having instantly. So here you can see minimum, uh, number format, auto, auto deci decimals, um, and then what else have we got? Uh, I don't know. Uh, label axis, grid lines. Yeah, let's put in some grid lines. Solid, oh, I don't really like solid. Let's put dashed. Oh, that's good. Let's change the color. Oh, now this is looking really horrible. Let's keep that. Um, and then look, it, it's giving me nice colors. I mean, the one thing I don't like about um, Excel is that the color um, design aspect is much harder. But here they chose a nice colors for you. Love that. And uh, yeah, up the top here, you can see we can add different things. Line, shape, text. We can change the canvas size. We can arrange it by bringing through things forward or push it to the back, match style, um, and also we can add comments. So overall, you can see that generating very simple graphs has never been easier. And uh, yeah, this is something that you could use in for something like PowerPoint. So if we open up PowerPoint, they've also got a PowerPoint add in. And by the way, this isn't a sponsored video. I just think this is a cool tool that you should know about. So here, buy a render for PowerPoint once you've paid your money or got your free trial and uploaded it and logged in and gone through all the hoops they want you to go through. You can go here, add image, and then it will take you to your gallery and you can put in something you've generated in bio render. So here, let's have a look. We've got, uh, let's go uh, this one. Sure, that is a rubbish image that I had a practice with. So we'll put that in and it should, oh, something went wrong. Please try again. This was working when I wasn't filming. This is always the way, isn't it? Let's try again. Come on, bio render. We can do it. We can do it. Let's put in that. Okay, add image. Oh, I should have put in my clownfish thing. Anyway, it was working. I don't know why it's not working now. Um, but you can put in different um, uh, things from your gallery uh, once it's working. So a little bit of a bug there, sort that out bio render team. Um, anyway, so yeah, there's your graph. Let's head back to the gallery. And so you can see it saves everything in your gallery. Yes, I don't wanna verify my email. Stop asking me. Um, and then down here are all the things you've generated and you can use them in multiple places in PowerPoint if it works. So if you think you need to create awesome illustrations or create posters or create awesome simple graphs, I think a bio render, scientists, four scientists, absolutely love it. Look at that. And I'm going to leave you with my amazing uh, clownfish in my cells dissecting liver research infographic.
There we are. Nobel Prize, I'm coming for you. All right then, that's it. Good. If you like this video, check out this one where I talk about what makes a great poster presentation. I've got a super long beard. It's an old school video. Go check it out. I think you'll love it.